Hello, Rick here, and it's been a while since I made a video on one of my favourite science fiction universes, Mass Effect, and since there is very little news on this series, I'm taking the minute interest generated by similarities in another franchise to talk about the Reapers. <coughs> Picard. This video explores the lore behind their re-emergence and the threats that they pose to the species of the galaxy to give those not in the know a quick rundown. So beware, spoilers for Mass Effect, and I guess Star Trek Picard ahead. The story begins long before the emergence of the Human Systems Alliance onto the galactic scene, and even before the creation of the Citadel Council, the governing bodies of the Mass Effect galaxy. In fact, we'll have to start with the Protheans. For now. This society appears to have left its markers and ruins all throughout the galaxy in the form of archives of information and the foundations of intergalactic travel, the mass relays. These powerful devices are constructed of an unknown, seemingly impenetrable alloy that creates a corridor of zero mass down which a ship can travel to another star system. At the centre of this web was the Citadel, a meticulously maintained station in the middle of the artificial Serpent Nebula. Many systems of now spacefaring species have become an interstellar power by uncovering such ruins within their home systems and reverse engineering the technology. Such is the case with Humanity, which found a Prothean archive on Mars, and the Asari, who had such an archive on Thessia, their homeworld. Such libraries of information were often covert observation posts from the Protheans, who had studied their time's primitive species, such as Stone Age Mankind. Thessia held a beacon, a telepathic repository of information, and the housing for a dormant AI. The Protheans even defended the early Asari from other hostile races, ending up being interwoven into Asari mythology as goddesses. Approximately 50,000 years ago, the Protheans disappeared, gone without a trace. All their technology was left behind, although much was ruined and plundered. Some, like the Citadel, were preserved by bioengineered keepers. However, with ramping aggression from the Geth, a species of AI robots created by the Quarians in the 19th century, come the gradual revelation that much of the technology on which galactic civilization is built was not Prothean in origin, but the remnants of a far older, more malevolent power, the Reapers. These Reapers had returned 50,000 years ago and begun a clinical extermination of organic life throughout the galaxy, destroying any interstellar power that had reached a certain technological zenith. From what was studied, as well as the testimonies provided by Javik, a Prothean from suspended animation in 2186, some idea of Prothean culture could be constructed. Although it should be noted that Javik is a warrior born in a time of conflict, and the avatar of vengeance for his people, so his viewpoint may not be reflective of the culture as a whole, just its final desperate years. They were aware of the other developing species in the galaxy, even having interacted with the Asari and manipulated the genetic direction of the Hanar. The Protheans are revealed to be not a single race, but in fact a myriad of different alien species that were assimilated into the Prothean Empire. This empire expanded with the simple notion that other species fell in line or were destroyed. They also encountered hostile synthetic life in their cycle. Just as the Geth in the Council era revolted against their creators, the Zatil turned on the Za. Although this was at the behest of the Reapers, it hints at a larger picture. The Prothean Empire had risen to power after discovering the same ancient ruins and technologies that mankind and countless others had and will do. In the time of the Protheans, however, they assumed them to be remainders of the Inusanon, a species that had mysteriously vanished over 50,000 years before the emergence of the Protheans. Sound familiar? Thus had the cycle repeated. Every 50 millennia, a species would rise, discover Mass Effect technology developed by the previous cycle, as well as the vast interstellar network of mass relays with the Citadel Station at its centre. They'd build their empire, monarchy or council on the supposed gifts of their precursors, and just as they began to take note of this historic cycle, the Reapers would return and wipe the slate clean. 
In the case of the Protheans, it was their unity and conformity that spelled their end. So focused had they been on making a single monolithic power, turned to one way of life, one way of being with no diversity, that when the Reapers came, they effectively only had to contend with a predictable set of tactics, and every sacrifice that the Protheans made was turned to the Reapers' advantage. But what drives this cycle of death, or more specifically, harvest? What are the Reapers? Well, their origin is the beginning of the cycle. Hundreds of thousands of years ago, the Leviathan, we don't know their true name, were an aquatic species that could mentally manipulate and indoctrinate other species into serving them. Equally eldritch-like in appearance too, they resembled giant cuttlefish or squid, and began to enslave species to serve them. They became the first known spacefaring empire, and being so long-lived, watched a pattern emerge. Their servitors would frequently construct artificial intelligence and synthetic species to help make their lives easier, but every time, those servants would turn on their creators and overthrow them, wiping them out. Billions were lost with every synth uprising or rogue AI. In an ironic twist, the Leviathan would go on to create their own artificial sentience, the Catalyst, in order to protect organic life and try to prevent this frequently witnessed extinction. But the Catalyst soon decreed that organic life, including the Leviathan, were responsible for the problem and therefore turned on its creators. Harvesting the Leviathan, using its own servitor species, it saved their genetic data, their culture, history, their essence, into a new form that would last. A Harbinger, the first Reaper. Thus did the Reapers begin their first cycle, waging war on organics and synthetics alike, and converting entire cultures into new synthetic entities, a new Reaper. When their work was done, and the only species left were the fledgling races yet to achieve spaceflight, the Reapers prepared for the next cycle. They left traces of their civilization, the mass relays and the citadel, as well as numerous breadcrumbs of technology throughout the galaxy, so that sentient races would progress along predicted evolutionary paths and congregate at the citadel. Then the Reapers retreated into dark space, beyond the edge of the galaxy to wait. Here they hibernated, leaving behind a vanguard to watch over galactic progress, and just when new civilizations began to have trouble with artificial intelligence and the threat of extinction presented itself again, the Reapers would return. They'd first deactivate the mass relays, capture the Citadel, and sweep through the galaxy, preserving organic cultures as a new Reaper, then they reset the board. It was a hellish time, where even the dead were repurposed into technologically infused husks, or augmented into horrific weapons, and indoctrinated agents of the Reapers undermined the political powers left standing. Of course, intelligent species began to notice these cycles in history, but by then it was often too late to stop it, and the Reapers were so far more advanced than any other power that none really stood a chance anyway. On top of that, there's the handicap of most species building their entire culture's progress off of second and third hand Reaper tech. There, however, existed two options for most, a warning and a legacy. The Protheans, for example, left behind their beacons, telepathic archives that would reach out to nearby mines and fill their head with visions of the Protheans and the Reapers, all the collected knowledge that they had amassed. However, the beacons were configured for a Protheans mind, and therefore garbled or unintelligible to most others, often resulting in unconsciousness. The other method was far grander. Many species over the countless cycles fought valiantly, but all came to the conclusion that they were doomed, so they bequeathed their works to the next cycle. Over the eons, scraps of information were passed on to the next galactic government through preserved archives who then added to the knowledge, and eventually this took the form of a device that would attach to the Reaper's own citadel and reactivate the Catalyst, presenting it with a number of handily colour-coded options. It was not a weapon, not really. It was an attempt to break the cycle that the Reapers had established by presenting new options. Should synthetics and organics have found a way to coexist, 
then the Reapers could be remotely destroyed. Or the user could gain control of the Reapers to use them as effective guardians to watch over the galaxy in an uncertain future. Or finally, and most drastically in my opinion, it was the ability to fire out a synthesis wave that would elevate organic life and synthetic life into a merger of both, but something new and more. However it ends is up to the player, but all of these result in the closure of this repeating galactic chapter. There are a lot of surface level similarities between this and Picard's unfolding storyline, the use of telepathic beacons, and the fact that the Reapers are effectively hyper-evolved synthetics that aim to preserve through destruction. But the deeper motivations are there too, the fact that this happened to a civilization before and then threatens to occur again, centering around the conflict between organic and artificial life. The idea that rebellion always occurs, and that the only way to prevent it is destruction of one side. The Reapers were ultimately acting to preserve cultures by creating new life forms, but their method was cruel and in many ways was simply an evolution of the same conflict, a perpetual stalemate, waiting for an out. I honestly don't mind that Picard maybe is borrowing heavily from the setting of Mass Effect, as Mass Effect borrowed heavily from Star Trek among many others. There are too as many differences as similarities, but the reason attention is being drawn to the similar plot elements is that Mass Effect's entire universe was structured around this deep lore, but Star Trek was not. In fact, Trek has always gone out of its way to protect and preserve artificial life, and the cause for many of these rebellions is always mankind becomes fearful of its creations, which doesn't line up with the Federation's usual approach. So this storyline kind of feels a little shoehorned in, saying that, as of typing these words, Picard has not concluded, so I will withhold final judgement. So there we go. Still a lot of background and minutia that I've skipped over, but as I said, this was mostly to bring people unfamiliar with the Mass Effect cycle quickly up to speed as to why Star Trek Picard is receiving such comparisons. Thanks for watching this video, and I'm curious to see if you've played Mass Effect and if not, did this video help? Thanks again for watching either way. I've been Rick and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.